little fox. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Chapter Twelve: The Cheshire Cat Speaks. Alice was having trouble holding the wiggling baby. She was still only nine inches high. As quickly as she could, Alice carried the baby outside the Duchess's house. The baby grunted, and Alice examined it closely. With each passing moment, it looked more and more like a pig. I don't know what I'll do with this creature when I get home," Alice said. The baby grunted loudly. This time, there could be no mistake. This is definitely a pig," Alice said. She put the animal on the ground, and it ran into the woods. Relieved, Alice started walking. She was soon startled to see the Cheshire Cat sitting in a tree and grinning. Alice thought he looked friendly despite his long claws and sharp teeth. She decided to ask a question. Cheshire Cat, Alice began, and the cat's grin grew wider. Would you please tell me which way to go from here? That depends on where you want to go, the Cheshire Cat replied. Alice thought for a moment. I don't really care as long as I get somewhere. Then it doesn't matter where you go, the Cheshire Cat said. You're sure to get somewhere if you walk far enough. While that answer was true, Alice didn't think it was helpful. She tried another question. What sort of people live around here? The Cheshire Cat waved his right front paw and said, "The Hatter lives in that direction." Pointing his left front paw, he said, "The March Hare lives over there. Visit whichever you like. They're both mad." Mad? Yes, they're both quite insane. Then again. Everyone here is mad, even you. Alice was curious. How do you know that I'm mad? You must be, or you wouldn't be here. By the way, are you playing croquet with the Queen today? Alice clapped her hands with the light. I'd like that very much, but I haven't been invited yet. Well, if you go, you'll see me there," the Cheshire Cat said, and then he vanished without another word. Alice wasn't surprised by this because she was getting used to odd things. While she was staring at the spot where the cat had been, he suddenly reappeared. I forgot to ask what happened to the baby," he said. "The baby turned into a pig," Alice said calmly, as if that happened every day. "I thought it would," the Cheshire Cat said, and vanished again. "I'd better wait to be sure he isn't coming back," Alice said to herself. But the Cheshire Cat didn't reappear. After a few minutes, Alice walked toward the March Hare's house. I've seen hatters before, but I've never met a March Hare. As Alice said this, she looked up. There was the Cheshire Cat sitting in a tree. Did you say pig or fig? The Cheshire Cat asked. I said pig. I wish you wouldn't keep appearing and disappearing so suddenly. You're making me dizzy. All right. This time the Cheshire Cat vanished slowly, beginning with his tail and ending with his mouth. 
His grin remained long after the rest of him had disappeared. I've seen a cat without a grin, but never a grin without a cat. Alice shook her head in disbelief. That's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Alice soon came to a house with chimneys shaped like ears. The roof was made of fur. That must be the March Hare's house, she said. And because the house was bigger than she was, Alice wanted to grow. She nibbled at her mushroom until she was two feet high. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Chapter 13 A Tea Party Alice walked around the March Hare's house until she spotted a table under a tree. The March Hare and the Hatter were having tea. A dormouse sat between them, fast asleep. The other two rested their elbows on him as they chatted. Although the table was large, all three were crowded at one end. As Alice approached, the Hatter and the March Hare jumped up. There's no room for you! They cried. No room at all! Nonsense! There's plenty of room! Alice sat down in an armchair at the other end of the table. <sighs> Sighing, the Hatter and the March Hare sat down again. Have some juice, the March Hare said. Alice looked around the table. I see tea, but I don't see any juice. That's because there isn't any, the March Hare said. Then it wasn't very nice of you to offer it. Alice felt impatient. It wasn't very nice of you to sit down without being invited, the March Hare said. You have plenty of room here, Alice said. All this time, the Hatter had been silently studying Alice. You need a haircut, he said. And you need to stop making personal comments, Alice scolded him. She couldn't believe how rude everyone was in this strange land. The Hatter took his watch from his pocket and studied it. He shook the watch and held it to his ear. What day of the month is it? He asked Alice. She thought for a moment. The fourth. The Hatter sighed. <sighs> My watch is off by two days! He gave the March Hare an angry look. I told you that butter wouldn't fix it! But I use the best kind of butter, the March Hare said. Yes, but you shouldn't have used the bread knife to spread it inside my watch! Some breadcrumbs obviously got in as well. The March Hare took the watch and looked at it gloomily. Then he dipped it into his tea and checked it again. The watch still didn't work. Alice got up and peered over his shoulder. What a strange watch! It tells the day of the month, but not the hour. Why should it? The Hatter said. Does your watch tell you what year it is? Of course not, Alice said. Suddenly, the Dormouse woke up. That's what I was going to say, he said, and immediately went back to sleep. Alice sat back down at the other end of the table. This conversation makes no sense. I have better things to do with my time than sit here and waste it. The Hatter looked down his nose at Alice. Time is a he, not an it. I don't understand, Alice said. Of course you don't, the Hatter said. I bet you've never even spoken to time. 
If you're friendly with him, he'll do almost anything you ask. Alice leaned forward, full of curiosity. Like what? Let's say it's nine o'clock in the morning, and you're supposed to start your lessons. You could whisper to time. And suddenly, it would be one o'clock, and time for lunch. Oh, that would be wonderful, Alice said. Are you friendly with time? The Hatter looked sad. Not anymore. I was singing at a concert given by the Queen of Hearts. I'd just begun when the Queen shouted, Stop! You're murdering the time! The Dormouse suddenly woke up again. The Queen was mad because the Hatter wasn't keeping the bee. The Hatter nodded sadly. But Time thought I wanted to murder him. And now he won't do a thing for me. It's always six o'clock! Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Chapter 14 The Tea Party Never Ends Alice looked around the table. There were many place settings, but the only ones at the table were the Hatter, the March Hare, and the Dormouse. Why are there so many dishes? Alice asked the Hatter. It's always six o'clock, so that means it's always time for tea, he explained. We don't have time to wash the dishes. So when you need clean dishes, you move to the next place setting? Alice asked. The Hatter nodded in agreement. Exactly. Alice thought about this for a moment. But what happens when you come back to where you started? Let's change the subject, the March Hare said. I'm getting bored. I think the young lady should tell us a story. What? Alice shook her head. I don't know any stories. Then the, the Dormouse will, will tell us one! The March Hare and the Hatter said together. They pinched the Dormouse on both sides at once. Tell us a story, the March Hare said. Yes, please do, Alice begged. And be quick about it, or you'll fall asleep before you're done, the Hatter added. The Dormouse sat up straight and began to talk. Once upon a time, there were three little sisters. Their names were Elsie, Lacey, and Tilly. They lived at the bottom of a well, and... Did they get hungry down there? Alice asked. She was always interested in what people ate and drank. The Dormouse thought for a moment or two. They lived on molasses, he finally said. Alice shook her head in disbelief. Those girls couldn't have done that, she said gently. That would have made them ill. Yes, they were very ill, the Dormouse said. Alice tried to imagine what it would be like to live in a well, but she couldn't. Why did they live at the bottom of a well? Have some more tea, the March Hare said to her. I've had nothing so far, Alice said. So I can't have more. Nonsense, the March Hare said. If you have nothing, anything is more than that. Alice didn't know what to say to this. So she helped herself to tea and bread and butter. Then she turned to the Dormouse and repeated her question. Why did the sisters live at the bottom of a well? Again, the Dormouse took a few moments to think. Because it was a molasses well. There's no such thing, Alice said angrily. The Hatter and March Hare shushed her. 
The Dormouse frowned. If you can't be nice, he said, you can finish the story yourself. <sighs> no, please go on. I promise to stay quiet and listen, Alice said. I want a clean cup, the Hatter interrupted. So they all moved one place to the right, and the Dormouse went on with his story. The sisters were drawing things beginning with the letter M, such as... Why with an M? Alice asked. I don't think... Then you shouldn't talk, the Hatter said. This bit of rudeness was more than Alice could bear. She got up in disgust. As she walked away, the Dormouse fell asleep. The Hatter and the March Hare didn't seem to notice her leaving. Alice looked back several times, hoping they would call after her. But now, they were busy trying to put the Dormouse into the teapot. I'll never go there again, Alice said as she walked through the woods. That was the dumbest tea party ever.